I grew up loving radio, especially Chicago radio, which over the years has turned out to be some of the nation's best year after year. Uh, you know, we had some of the best morning talent from the 70s, 80s, I mean, forever. And so uh, I loved it. I imitated it, made tapes and things, but I was a jock in high school and I went off to play baseball at Illinois. So as a jock, you, you major in duh. So I didn't have really a major in mind. And then, I, then like a lot of college ball players, you realize you've maxed out. And I tore up my arm and thought, God, i got to pick a real major here. And all my friends said, hey, you know, your dad's on TV. My dad's Harry Volkman, the TV weatherman for, like, you may not know him because he's been off the air for about 10 years or more. But uh, he, uh, he had been on TV. And at the time, all my friends said, you know, he, he's already in that business. He could tell you, you know, the ins and outs, even though it was TV weather and I wanted to be the – you know, teen idol DJ, but so I uh, just, I changed my major. I was at Illinois, University of Illinois at the time, and it was such a madhouse, you know, 50,000 enrollment, that I transferred to a smaller school, again, my dad's alma mater, University of Tulsa, which only had 5,000, and it was a similar facility to this, where you get your hands on everything. So I learned everything from production to advertising, writing, and I also got to go on the air, and eventually, you know, that turned into my first job, and they just kept moving up from there. I never thought of radio as like a career, something I could do for a living, for a job. Uh, I did some you know, radio stuff in, in high school. I even did some in college, but it was all for fun. I never took it serious, never did anything like, all right, this is the future. I graduated college, and I went on into the real world and had a job I hated for a long time. And when I was 28, I wanted to do something different, and my mom told me about Illinois Center for Broadcasting. She said there's a broadcast school in Lombard. And I'm like, Mom, there's not a broadcast school in Lombard. I'm like, you're, you're nuts. There's not, a, there's not a school in Lombard. I go, I know Lombard. I'm like, you're thinking the mall. It's not, <laughs> it's not a school. And she's like, no, I saw the commercial on TV. You got to check it out. Got to check it out. So she gave me the number like the next day. I called. And sure enough, there's a broadcast school here. So I came in to check it out. At the time, I was selling cars. And uh, I walked around the facility. I saw the radio. I saw the TV stuff. And I'm like, you know what? This is for me. I'm going to be the next guy on ESPN Sports Center. I'm the next TV anchor. I'm like, those guys that are on there right now are bums. I could do better than they can. <laughs> I'm like, done. You know what? I can do this stuff. So I, I, like, I was here on a Wednesday, enrolled on like Friday, started on Monday. So it was like just a whirlwind kind of thing. Threw my whole world upside down. I was all set ready to go to NIU for business, and somebody at the last second was like, you should maybe think about getting into radio. You have a great personality and blah, 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 blah. So I checked out here, and I ended up switching at the very last second to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. So. Um, I started off my internship at the river, the place that I'm at right now, and I just stayed there. I did. I just kept going. Like the 10-week internship, I just kept showing up. So I think they kind of, like, you know, eventually just said, "This girl's clearly not going away, so maybe we should pay her." So I was hired <laughs> part-time in promotions and helping produce the morning show, and then I moved into the traffic and continuity department where I'm scheduling commercials. And that, and now what I do is uh, I report traffic for two of our stations in the morning. I do middays out of Joliet on 100.7 and then nights at the river at 95.9. Um, I would say what inspired me was doing work where I could be involved with people and communicate with people because I think that's what I'm good at. I used to DJ like weddings, uh, school parties, stuff like that, and uh, always listen to B96 and one night watched this commercial, Man Cow actually. Uh, hey. <laughs> Uh, talking about, uh, you know, it was with the Illinois Center for Broadcasting, so I checked it out, and uh, it was pretty cool. And, and just like everybody else, I wanted to be on the air, and, and that, was my, that was my goal, I wanted to be on the air. But then, in order to be at B96, my way in was promotions, and then I found my love for uh, actually setting everything up and doing everything to where it looked, because I'm a neat freak, so everything had to be perfect, and then when Eddie and Jobo or whoever we had, you know, Brian Middleton, Roxanne at the time, um, would be out there. I would make sure that everything was perfect. And uh, so I just fell in love with doing that at, during an internship when I was here. And then same thing, I just kind of never left, you know, I, just, I was always there. When I wasn't, when I was, wasn't supposed to be there, I was there, you know. <laughs> so, so they're finally like, all right, Rich, all right, fine, fine, you know, we'll, we'll let you stay. I'm going to go backwards because everyone went forward. So I've been at Fox Chicago as a special projects reporter for, uh, well, since 1994. But I did general assignment reporting for a few years. So I do everything from light features to investigations, usually long form, three, four minute stories. Um, who knows how long that'll last because we keep changing our format. Before that, I was in uh, California 
ABC affiliate for four years before that in Wisconsin. Uh, in Mad I went to UW Madison. I ma majored in broadcast journalism. Alumni. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, did I and, mention Illinois? And, <laughs> yeah, you did. And uh, and I had internships in Hartford, Connecticut. I, I've always wanted to do TV news, so I uh, I also wrote for uh, daily newspapers um, in college. Uh, I was editor of my daily newspaper, and I if you go all the way back to like fourth grade, I did a neighborhood newspaper. So I've always <laughs> knew uh, I wanted to do journalism, and I think probably from second grade when I watch my first TV newscast, I knew I wanted to do TV news. So it goes way back to like 1972 that I knew I wanted to do what I do. So, so from a radio and a TV perspective, what are some of the new things that are coming about or that have just come in to vogue now and things that you see that, that are happening in the future? But the internet is one that's really over the last like five years, it's really just blown up. For our radio station, I know for all the stations here in town, um, the use of podcasts, the use of people being able to listen to radio now at their own leisure. Like, we, we can do a live show on Monday and you can listen to it on Thursday and just download it, listen to it whenever you want. It's right there on our website. So now that's created a whole new department of, of people at our radio station to not only run the website, but to make sure the stuff is put up there accurately, that people can access it and, and get to it very easily. People can listen to it. I mean, there's a whole new world out there for radio and TV because of computers. To kind of branch off of what Matt was saying, like when I did traffic, it wasn't my first choice to sit behind a desk and look at a computer and enter contracts all day and schedule commercials. When I got in, when I wanted to get into radio, just like 95% of the people who come to the school, I wanted to be on the air. That's what I was ready to do, not, you know, sit behind a desk. But with that being said, looking back at that year that I did the traffic and continuity, I learned so much about the other side of radio. There's the sales side, there's the programming side, there's promotions. All these different departments come together to make a radio station what it is. Yeah, you know, as listeners, we hear the programming side. We hear what's on the air, but we also hear the commercials. Somebody has to go out and sell those commercials. Somebody has to go out and set up the event when, you know, they're broadcasting wherever. And so I really think that with radio and probably with television too, in the future, you're going to see a lot of people keeping their jobs because they have an understanding of how different departments work because they're able to do more than one thing. Uh, for, for me and promotions, um, I mean, you normally with you would think that promotions, oh yeah, you set up a tent and a table, great, you pass some things out to people, it's not the case either. Uh, I do everything from like the engineer work, you know, like you need to know where this chord goes to get this chord, you need to know how, uh, how to play music through all the speakers and everything. You just need to be very versatile and just make sure that you know if you're if you know how to do one thing find out how to do something else because that's that's going to lead you in another direction kind of where Matt was saying with uh, other things how like uh, our, we have a whole CBS radio has a whole digital department and they took all of our web you know webmasters and everything put them in one whole department and these were guys that you know were uh, just doing video and stuff like that and now they're blogging and they're you know taking video and something happens now it's turning into radio is kind of turning into a in a sense like a TV thing, but it's it's all web-based because now when Transformers 3 is filming downtown, I need a camera crew to go down, down you know, film this, put it on the B96 blog and, and put it up and make sure that, you know, then we talk about it on the air. When you start out in TV, most people really want to get into a TV market where they're not a one-man band. And if you know what a one-man band is, it's where you're shooting and editing. Uh, your own stories, you know, setting up a tripod, standing in front of it, trying to make sure you're in focus and centered, <laughs> and then going back and, and, you know, putting it on air. In the really small markets, that's where a lot of that is done. So you really need to know how to do everything. Um, when I started, I only knew how to report. Now I report, I produce, and I edit. I, I edit a lot of my own stories. And then we not only have to um, do traditional broadcast news, we have to write a print version of our broadcast stories that goes on the web. We have to add web elements. Um, we blog, and of course there's social networking. You, know, you gotta stay one step ahead of your competition, prove that you're faster and better, and that you persevere, you don't say no, and that you know how to do everything.